Hi everyone, it's me, Tim, and today I want to talk about game development time. I've gotten a lot of questions from a lot of people. This is maybe the most commonly asked question, at least in the last few weeks, because I've gotten at least, I don't know, four or five of these. Uh, Geomancer HT asks, please talk about the it's ready when it's done and a delayed game is eventually good. Tetramere one asks, uh, talking about a length of development would be an interesting subject because teams have gotten bigger, but games take longer too. Yeti Catcher 1780 asks, do you think games coming out under shorter deadlines means only the best things get put in the game, so it's better, or do you think it's always better for them to have huge development cycles? And our own Bite Your Own Teeth asks, here's another one, when to cut, when to polish, what to look out for when a feature won't make the cut, how do you get it past the finish line? Woo. These are pretty much a lot of questions about dev time, deciding how to cut. I've touched upon this a little bit in past videos where I talk about making your design pillars and deciding what matches them and what doesn't. In my recent video, I mentioned I've made a game as quickly as 14 weeks for Bard's Tale construction set which is what, that's not even three months? No, it's a little over three months. It's not even four months. I've also talked about Wildstar taking nine years. I think a reasonable development time is somewhere within that limit, but let me talk about first. I'll do this as I like, I like to do a lot. Let's talk about the pros of a long development time and the cons of a long development time. So. Long development time has a lot of obvious pros. First of all, it lets you add a lot of features and content that you otherwise would not have had time to do. Some features just take a long time to do right. I've said this is why I don't put romance options in my games. Personally, I'm not that into them, but I put a lot of stuff in my games I'm not that into. I'm not really into always pure fighter, kill everything paths, but I still do that. The thing is, I think to get romance options done right, you really have to spend a lot of time on them, which really absorbs a lot of narrative designers time that could have been spent doing other things. And I played a lot of games with romance options that feel like bizarre slot machines. Like I said the right thing. I had the right item. Oh good. Now the person's going to sleep with me. It's just a strange thing. It's like, if that's your thing, go and play dating sims. There's a, there's a whole genre of games available that do romance a lot better than I see in a lot of RPGs. But just in terms of content, um, if you have a long development time, you don't have to cut as much stuff. I've talked about having to cut things, not because I thought they were bad for the game. Sometimes you cut things because you realize this doesn't work with other features or this thing really isn't something that belongs in this game. But sometimes you cut things just because this will take a long time to do. I've mentioned how big Monarch was supposed to be in Outer Worlds, and I do regret that it got cut. It was the one place in the world that was supposed to be big and exploratory and really make it feel like there's this second planet out there that's lawless and huge and just has all this stuff tucked away in it. And we lost a lot of that when it got cut, so you don't have to do that. Um, when you have a long development time, it makes the world not only feel bigger, but it makes it feel more realized. There's a lot of stuff to explore, people to find. They don't all feel like they're on the main story quest, which I really like. That's why I like side quests, because it doesn't make it feel like everybody you run into is somehow involved in this main storyline that you're trying to tell. There's a lot of other people just trying to live their lives in this world. And yeah, they may have side quests for you to do, but some of them don't. They're just there to run their shop or farm, or do whatever it is they're doing, and they don't have anything to do with you. They're just there. And finally, a long development time lets you debug. I think I've mentioned this, especially for the Troika games. Leonard and I sometimes joke that every single Troika game shipped as an alpha. Um, Arcanum certainly did. Right after we got everything put in, all the features we wanted, and some we probably should have cut, and we got them effectively debugged. I mean, you may think Arcanum was buggy, but there were a lot of crash bugs. We were about to start a balance pass when everything was locked and the game was shipped. 
very similar thing happened with Temple. And Temple, remember, Temple was done in, it was originally scheduled for 18 months, and we did it in 20. That's a short period of time to do an entire D&D three and a half rule set with every class. You know, I tried cutting things. They said no. Um, but what happened was when we got to the end and we're like, okay, now we're going to debug. Hopefully they'll give us another month or two. Nope, shipped. And then with Vampire, I don't have to say, it shipped even before it was finished. I mean, that's why the Warrens are, at the end of the game, are just completely empty. So, those are all the advantages that a longer development time would have had. But let's talk about some of the bad things that a long development time will cause. Sometimes a big bag of features isn't a good thing. Having a game, there, there's, there's, it, there's too much of a good thing is a valid thing in game development. Sometimes you have features that are individually good, but they just don't belong together. I, I've mentioned this multiple times that we cut things out of Fallout that I weren't saying were bad. Maybe some people would like talking raccoons. Maybe some people would have liked endoskeleton robots or a liquid metal robot. I'm just saying those didn't belong in the concept we had for Fallout, so they got cut. They didn't get cut for time reasons. They got cut because I didn't think they belonged. The danger of having a long development time is one of the ways you can cut a feature without insulting the designer of that feature too much is saying you literally don't have time. When you have a long development time, you lose that argument. So having to say something subjective like, I don't like it, that doesn't fly with a lot of designers. Now, I firmly believe that that's something the game director can do. I had ideas for pillars that Josh didn't put in. I thought they were good, but it's his game. He can say, I don't like that, or I don't want to do that, and that's fine. I did that on my games, and sometimes it led to lengthy arguments with those designers. So another bad thing <clears throat> that comes with long development time is just coordinating all that work. Long development time usually means bigger game, more complex game, more feature set game, and that requires a lot of coordination. How are those things working together? Are there unintended emergent side effects? Do you like them? Are they fun? Do you need to get rid of them? Having production ride herd over, instead of a few dozen features, a few hundred features, <clears throat> that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. And you're expecting a lot out of them. And sometimes they're up to the task, and sometimes they're not. Another problem with long development time is hardware changes. It's very hard to target your end machine when you're planning to have a eight-year development cycle. That, I mean, consoles only have 10-year lifetimes, are you making a game that you're targeting the next console? You have no idea what that hardware is going to be. Or are you making a game and you're hoping that NVIDIA or AMD are going to have a really amazing video card that can run your game and you're targeting something that doesn't exist yet? That's a risk. It's a huge danger, but with a long development time, you're probably going to target some things that at the time you're developing them, hardly any video card of any video card could handle. And sometimes you're planning on faster hard drives and bigger RAM on your PC as well. All issues you have to deal with and guess. Uh, there's some other issues like team changes. If you have an eight year project, I guarantee not everyone's gonna stick around for that. People don't like eight year holes in their resume. I have a 10 year gap in my resume from Bloodlines in 2004 to South Park in 2014. I don't like that. Um, and it's because Wildstar took so long, it absorbed six years of my time and then still didn't come out till after South Park. So you have to deal with more team rollover the longer your project lasts. There's also something called, that I call team relaxation that happens on long projects. I'm sure you've all had people you knew in high school or college, and maybe it was you, who didn't really work hard until they were close to the deadline. You know the person. First week in class, you're assigned a paper or a project, and they don't do anything for the first 80% of the class. And then those people pull a lot of all-nighters in the last few weeks. I saw that in engineering, my engineering school, all the time. And those people were quick to blame the teacher. He gave us too much. This assignment is too hard. 
And meanwhile, a lot of people who started the first week are like, what are you talking about? We're done. So there's a tendency for, for employees who relax to blame the teacher, their employer, the publisher. I didn't have enough time. But by the way, before I you go, oh, you're blaming the employees again, I see this happening at company levels all the time. I see a lot of companies that I've worked with and some that I haven't who are a little too relaxed without a publisher driving them. Maybe their design pillars are really loose or they're, they put in way too many features than they should. Maybe I did that with Arcanum. When you have a publisher writing you and saying, hey, this is what the contract was for. Hey, you're supposed to be at this stage in the milestones. Some employers and some developers just do better with having someone be the adult in the room and say, hey, you're supposed to be doing this stuff. So let me give you an example that's somewhat personal to me that I'm just, I have a little bit of worry about and I know this is going to get, you know, published because people are like, oh, he's bagging on Fallout. What worries me about the current Fallout is I was reading that now that Bethesda's finishing Starfield, they're going to start an Elder Scrolls next. So Fallout 5 will be pushed out to sometime after that. Well, assuming that each one of those is going to take five, maybe six years, that means the earliest we're going to see Fallout 5 is in 2034. That's almost 20 years after Fallout 4. 20 years. And it's 40 years since I started making the first Fallout. That is a long time. That's decades. That's generations. 40 years is almost two generations. There are going to be people playing Fallout 5 who may not have ever played Fallout 4, who can't even play Fallout 1. Maybe it's just not playable anymore. There are going to be people playing Fallout 5 who their entire concept of Fallout is going to be whatever this Amazon TV show is. That worries me a little bit. I do wish Bethesda could bifurcate their teams and work on multiple things at once, but I also totally understand why they don't. They do really well when they focus on one thing. I've, caught it, I've heard it at different companies called the Eye of Sauron, that you have a few people who work on the project who are really good at writing that project and keeping the herd in check. So I totally get why they do it. I'm just concerned that as project lengths have extended, I don't know how much longer this can happen because it basically means that a franchise is in danger of aging is the wrong word, becoming archaic. I mean, there are people who are going to look at Fallout 5 and go, wow, this, this, this franchise started 40 years ago. Well, my, my dad played this. My grandfather played this. I, I'm not ready for those kind of comments about Fallout, but it looks like what's going to happen. So I guess to sum up, I understand all the pros of having a long development time. I've put out some very objective cons of having a long development time, but also just a subjective fear I have of that if game companies start taking a long time to make games, it's really going to make those franchises seem dated because they literally will be dated. Anyway, I hope, I, I hope this answers all of the questions I got from all of the people about game development time.